these discussions are not clear cut. Uh, we are really trying to understand what is relevant policy, how to deal uh, with the revolutionary changes that technological developments bring. On the one hand, as they offer opportunities for uh, enabling fundamental human rights such as free expression, press freedom, access to information, freedom of assembly, but also, for example, the documentation and sharing of human rights violations. On the other hand, we have to be realistic about the threats that technologies can also bring. Uh, when we look at human rights, there's increased uh, mass surveillance, mass censorship, uh, and other kinds of repression also with the help of technologies, uh, sadly, often exported from the EU and the United States, uh, democracies and self-proclaimed free societies. As Americans, we have absolutely no doubt about why we must defend our fundamental freedoms of expression, freedom of religion and assembly. They are the constitutional bedrock on which many of our other rights rest. All of this is not because we approve of hateful speech in any way, but because we strongly believe that such hatred withers in the face of public scrutiny, and that censorship will only force hateful ideology to find a new venue in which to manifest itself. Our commitment to freedom of expression doesn't mean that we, we sit idly by in the face of intolerance and hate either. The United States cares deeply about combating discrimination and abuses that are based on religious intolerance. Everyone in this room knows that there are big dividends from adhering to our universal rights. So it is more important than ever for the United States and the European Union to work together and do our utmost to ensure that freedom of expression is protected. Digital freedom, I think, as I refer to what Amnesty is saying, also requires what we call the digital responsibilities, probably. But what is the form of responsibility? How far it is? Uh, is it uh, based on the national law? or regional law, it is something that uh, you know, it can, it can be discussed further. What role should companies and governments play? Uh, I would say that we should play by the book. What I mean by the book is by the international standards that we adhere to, by international convention that we ratify. But in certain extent where by we cannot or we do not have that international standard yet, then maybe it's something that uh, you know, we could consider uh, having a framework at the international level. I think we're standing at a crossroads. Uh, in the past decade, the internet now reaches two billion people uh, who have access to it, and it's opened up the possibility for all of them to express themselves and reach a global audience. We believe that free speech and the access to information is a, is a human right, but we also believe that this is a, an issue that will drive development in social and economic progress, that freedom on the net um, is something that will, in the end, lead to progress around the world. Do we allow different interpretations of fundamental rights, or do we want one particular interpretation, for instance of the United States, to have uh, enforcement over the entire uh, global internet? Either you want to regulate the internet in such a way that uh, you put, for instance, free speech on number one, or you say, no, let this happen by itself. I would say that we cannot assume that without regulation, the internet will continue to favor open access, anonymous communication, free exchange of information. If we do not regulate it, it may happen or it may not happen, but these are decisions that we have to take. Some say we need more legal or corporate re restrictions in an immigration country, in a multicultural society, because there are so many differences. And some say this is also needed in a globalized, interconnected world. Restrictions are an excuse not to have an open conversation about who we are, what we share, how we differ, uh, what differences we find acceptable, and how we deal with these differences. This conversation is key in a multicultural, hyper-connected world, and yes, sometimes this conversation is rude, and it will hurt your feelings. We need to push towards a point where um, the policies and the norms and the ethics do have an alignment. Legislative cycles and, and responses in terms of legislation and regulation tend to be quite long, unwieldy. We're struggling how to reconcile these issues, these 
uh, policy issues, human rights law, international law, um, and so on, how these play out in the domain of the internet. 